two problems to be aware of. The problems of the yogic approach are well known. If you try to meditate, you will immediately see mind is difficult to control. The mind goes here and there. No matter how much you anchor it, breathing in, breathing out, already forgotten. All right, movement of the belly, gone. Belly itself forgotten, movement of the belly. And then, um, all right, at least count. Uh, one, two, three, then what, three or four, what was it? <laughs> that's also gone. So that's mind is difficult to control. That is an evidently a problem with the ap yogic approach. It's a difficult process. And uh, Arjuna mentions this to Krishna. And that uh, in sixth chapter, somebody said to me, am I doing it wrong? I'm unable to focus. I said, you are, you are modest. You are asking if I am doing it wrong. Arjuna didn't even do that. Arjuna in the Gita straight away told Krishna, your teaching is useless. In sixth chapter, he says, what yoga has been taught by you is no good. Why? Because it's impossible to quell the mind. It's impossible to, it's, it's like trying to control the wind. Arjuna says in the Bhagavad Gita. That's the difficulty in the yogic path. It takes a long time. The mind has to be trans transformed from primarily tamasic to rajasic to sattvic. Otherwise, meditation will not work. And the sattvic mind has to be trained dirghakala for a long time. Nairantarya, that means consistent practice. Krishna says to Arjuna, it is difficult, no doubt, but it's possible through via vairagya and abhyasa by systematic practice over a long period of time and also by dispassion for that which ties you to the world that has to be cut down that's the yogic path the difficulties are well known the solutions are also are well known though difficult to implement now in this insight path the difficulty is subtle and the solution is also subtle the difficulty is this one when one begins to understand what this path is talking about, the path of Vedanta, the path of knowledge, one gets the sense that it is, first of all, effortless. Because something is there. What effort do you have to do to convert this table into wood? What effort? Nothing. You have to recognize it is wood. That's it. That's all. Effortless. The second thing you sense that it is instantaneous. The moment you get it, you've got it. It might take you time to manifest it and so on, but getting it, stumbling upon it, recognizing it, instantaneous. So these, no doubt, these are the advantages. In one sense, it is effortless and it is instantaneous, but these are two are obstacles also. What happens is it leads to a kind of passivity and laziness, not doing anything. So I need not do anything, rather, this method, this approach demands constant engagement. Yoga, you can have an excuse. I need to sit in my meditation mat in the morning and in the evening and practice yoga. Not at other times, not possible. One of the Brahma Sutra says, Asino Sambhavat, which means it is possible while seated. So you can't, there is a way of walking meditation, but it's not commonly done. Uh, so, Yoga is a particular practice. Your body has to be in a particular position. Your breathing has to be in a particular position. Your mind has to be focused on something. Yoga requires that. But the way of knowledge is open at all times. Whether you are walking, drinking, talking, whatever you are doing, doing, you can use it.